All right, so new topic. We're going to have a look at algebra and indices, which we started last year. Uh, you would have done with your year seven teacher, looking at a lot of algebra and equations. And so we're just going to review some of that algebra to make sure we're all on the same page. So first of all, I'm going to start off with a bit of the why we use algebra. So let's have a think of an example. Remember, we're buying two t-shirts and let's say uh, three pairs of pants. We want to know how much it costs all together. So two equals some amount. Now let's say we know it's going to be times $10 because that's how much a sheet each t-shirt costs and times let's say uh, pants are a bit more expensive at 15. And that's going to get us $65 all up. Now sometimes we don't actually know what the values are ahead of time. So, I don't know, run it is that way? No, good. There we go. So, let's say I don't know how much they cost. What I might normally do is put a question mark in there two times some amount that I don't know yet, and then three times some amount that I don't know yet. But can you think of why this might be an issue? If I start doing maths with it, I might accidentally start treating these question marks as the same number. But we saw before they cost different amounts. So that's why, let me rub this out, we actually don't use the question mark. Even though that's what we mean, we're asking how much do they cost, we don't know yet. We're going to use something else instead. Let's use S for shirts and oh, short starts with S as well. Let's go P for pants. So, shirts, S, pants, P. All I've done is use a letter instead of a question mark, just so we remember what we're talking about. And because we're often going to have multiple question marks, such as in this case, I've got an S and a P, it's good to have them labeled separately. So when we see a letter, when we're doing algebra, we call it a pronumeral. And it's actually just in place of a question mark, something we don't know yet. Um, but we might try and figure out later. So let me rub all that out. That's not rubbing out. Oh, it's done this thing where it doesn't let me unselect it. Is it just going to keep scribbling? It is. Oh, there we go. Yes, here we go. Rub it out. All right. Technology, we'll get there. Trial run. Okay, so just remember, pronumerals are numbers we don't know yet, um, but we treat them just the same as numbers. It's just like a question mark that we're trying to figure out. So that can be our first definition. Uh, I might just type it, it might be easier. So let's say pronumeral. Let's move it over here. So, pronumeral, a letter or symbol used in the place of a number that we do not know. Uh, for example, those are pro. Numerals. All right, next definition. Expression. Actually, let's say algebraic expression. An algebraic an algebraic expression. Now I'm clicking the wrong screen there, my bad. So algebraic expression, sorry, is for a grouping of pronumerals and numbers used to express a value. All 
just remember in an algebraic expression, there is no equal sign. So, for example, an expression might be 4m plus 3x minus 7. Uh, a non-example would be 4x equals 6, because it's no longer an expression, but an equation, which we'll be doing in a later chapter. Alright, term. A term, I shouldn't write the word in the definition, that's like number one rule. Part of an algebraic expression. Terms are separated by plus or minus sign. Let me just move this up. Infinite whiteboard, not bad. Alright. E dot G. Let's say I've got let's say four A minus three B plus let's say two C over five D. In this example, I have an expression, algebraic expression, and there are some different terms. I've got term one. Term 2 and term 3. So even though this last one here has two pronumerals, those pronumerals are separated by a fraction or division, which means they are not a new term. So this one has three terms. Uh, another little uh, extra part is let's say I add on minus 5. That's its own new term, so term 4, but it is also, can you see that? Yeah, constant term as there are no perineurals. So what I've got there, ah, oh, my term, my running of terms gone off the page. constant term, as there are no perineurals. So that last term there, negative 5, is always negative 5. Whereas this one here, 4a, that could be 20. If a was 5, it could be 100. If a was 25, um, it's not a constant number. It all depends on what a is. Now, let me just rub that out. Right a much near to 4. All right, so that is term. Another one. Coefficient. The number in front is that two spaces? It looks like it's in front of a variable. Might have to do this eg below. Six x plus three y minus z. Uh, let's say plus I've run out of letters W. Let's go back. All right. So the coefficient of x is six. That one looks pretty easy. There's six lots of this x, so that is the coefficient. Coefficient of this one, I'm sure you could have a guess, is three. This one is where we get a bit trickier. What number? is this in front of the z. Well, there is a z there. There's not zero of them. There's actually minus one z. So the coefficient of this term is negative one. And you might look ahead here and be able to see, well, the coefficient of w is plus one. Or we never really write the plus, we just write one instead. And that's because the w is there. There isn't there aren't zero w's, there is one w there. So the coefficient is one. 
Right, I might start a new text box because I don't know how I'm going to go writing on the other side. All right, our last um, definitions are a bit easier. Sum, so that means addition or plusing. The sum of two numbers is when we add them together. We got the difference, which is subtraction. Uh, product, that's when we multipl multiply, so multiplication. Quotient, this is the tricky one. That's division. And then lastly, um, square. That's when you multiply by itself. So we'll just do a quick example of those ones. Can I move it? Okay, good. All right, so let's say the sum of 6 and x. So I need to write that as an expression. I've got it as an English expression. I want it as a maths expression. It's going to end up being 6 plus x because that is some addition. All right, the difference between, let's say, 3z and 4. Well, difference, we need to find the difference between them, which means we are subtracting 3z minus 4. Now, this is going to be trickier. So product is just going to be multiply. Let's say the sum of the product of 2 and x um, let's say with 5. So the sum of the product of 2 and x with 5. So 2 and x, what's the product of 2 and x? Well remember in algebra we don't write the multiplication sign. If we see something like this, 2x, it means 2 times x. And then uh, we need the sum of that product with 5. So we add on 5. And there we go. All right. I'm going to move over here just so I don't draw behind my camera. So the quotient of x and 2y. Yes, that's a Y. All right. Uh, that one is division. Now, we can write this two ways. X divided by 2Y. Or the other way, X over 2Y. Just because, remember, fraction is division. That is all it is. And then lastly, let's say the square of x, well, just means times itself, although we do, instead of just writing it x times x, we could also write it, or, and this is how we should be writing it, x squared, which just remember means x times itself, so I'll just highlight that one, because that, that one, division doesn't matter as much, although this one's nicer, uh, but square, we should definitely be writing this way. All right, so let's just do uh, a quick example using these definitions. So let's say, uh, I'll just rule a line off here so we know it's different. Um, state how many terms and the coefficient. So it's kind of two questions here and the coefficient of x. Okay, and let's do e dot g. So, how many terms and the coefficient of, oh, sorry, just realized. See, my canvas goes slightly wider than the screen. The coefficient of x. So, part a. All we've got here is, let's say, 3x minus 2y plus 4. 
So we need to figure out how many terms does this have and uh, what is the coefficient of x. Well, let's divide it up like this. So we've got three terms because there's a minus sign here, plus sign here. So one, two, three terms. And the coefficient of x, well, what number is in front of the x? It's three. Uh, so let's finish that sentence off. It's coefficient of x. Uh, all right, uh, part B. This one's going to be a bit trickier. Now, uh, 3a minus 5z minus x plus 4y. Well, how many terms do we have? 3a, negative 5z, negative x, and plus 4y. So four terms. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, why did he say negative 5x when that's minus or take away 5z? They are the same thing. Just remember, plusing a negative is the same as minus. So we could think of this as plus negative 5z or take away 5z. They are the same thing. So that is one, two, three, four terms. And the coefficient of x, well, what number is in front of this x? And it's not 0, because there's an x there. If it was 0, there'd be no x's. It is negative 1, because it's minus 1x is coefficient of x. It should say, it should say is the coefficient, but I'm uh, writing for speed here. All right, let's try... One last question. Let's say uh, 5x over 3 plus 4y minus 2. All right, so how many terms? Well, that one is just one term. It might look like two separate terms, but remember, it's only plus and minus that we count as separate terms. So three terms here, first term being 5x on 3, next one being positive 4y, and last one being negative 2. So three terms, and then the first term has the x in it. Well, what number is at the front of x? There is a 5 there, but remember this is all one term. So the coefficient of x is actually 5 over 3. And then I'm just going to... Right, it's coefficient of x, because I'll run out of room with my camera there. All right, so 5 over 3 is the coefficient of x. All right, so I'm going to give you some examples to do on Canvas. Have a go at those and see how you go.